Every death that occurs from an asbestos exposure could be prevented. Don't be fooled, there is a connection. Everything just ties together. I don't know what I can do. It's hard to describe what ADAO has been in my life. I certainly can't imagine it without ADAO. We've come a long way, and I'm really proud of ADAO. Keep me in your heart for a while. The reason why we don't have a ban is that um, a lot of people don't understand the, the issues and, and the facts um, surrounding that people are still being exposed. I think a lot of people don't understand that there is currently not a ban, which is part of the problem. And especially decision makers in Washington don't understand that, it's, that there's not a ban. Also the fact that a number of individuals think that it's not a, consist a current and consistent problem, which is entirely wrong as well. Um, we continue to have asbestos contamination in our products. We continue to have asbestos contamination in our homes. We continue to have asbestos contamination around sites and waste materials that are being disposed of all throughout the country. And so the fact that there's a lack of understanding is a large part of, of the problem that we're dealing with, as well as um, various interests um, that would prefer that asbestos issues and liability not be brought up uh, in terms of a ban or in terms of the public health actions. The organizations such as ADAO and, and, uh, and groups and constituents and other organizations similar to ADAO are, are play a vital, a vital, are vitally important in terms of educating and making people aware of the problems. Um, while we in the government try to put out information, get data, etc., we're not nearly as effective as organizations like ADAO in terms of building public interest and support and showing how um, these public health threats such as asbestos affects people's lives, how, how people um, become sick and ill and being able to connect with the community and show the community in ways that the government doesn't effectively communicate about the real concerns and the real issues in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, there's, there's, there's been kind of an ongoing um, issue in terms of getting good data to help them understand, especially data in the, not, in the non workplace. So, data about um, outdoor exposures and product exposures. Matter of fact, many products uh, that are in the market are still not evaluated by anybody in terms of their asbestos exposures and content. Americans are, continue to be um, misled or misbelieve that products that are termed, that are uh, there's a, a thing called asbestos-containing products or, or asbestos-containing materials, and that, and that these are materials that have less than 1% asbestos in products. And um, these products don't have to say that there's asbestos in there, but yet they pose a hazard. So um, many, many Americans and many individuals have no idea that these products, while less than 1% asbestos in them, still pose a significant hazard of exposure to them and their families and to workers across this country. So it's by weight. So if you took a bag of rocks and, uh, not even a bag of rocks, if you took a bag of feathers, excuse me, a bag of feathers and you put in a rock, that bag, all the weight of that bag would be to that rock essentially. 99.9% .9 of the weight of that bag would be the rock. Whereas you could have thousands and thousands of feathers in there. So when you were to open up that bag, the feathers would constitute your exposure. The rock would be very little, but the rock is all the weight. That's the kind of thing that happens with asbestos and materials. That asbestos has very little weight. It's light and fluffy. And so these products that would say, well, it's less than 1% asbestos by weight, you could still have huge exposures. In Libby, for instance, um, or the Libby uh, Zonalite Attic Insulation, could have way less than 1% of asbestos in that material. It would not be classified as asbestos containing. However, when you disturb it, it easily exceeds all of our occupational and non-occupational um, regulations and poses a significant hazard um, to those who are exposed. 
I think we started on, started down this road, and I think um, <clears throat> EPA and many other organiza organizations are starting to kind of pick this up. And the fact is, they have to demonstrate how people are truly exposed to asbestos and what those exposures are. So. You know, you'll see pictures of people um, out on a ball field or some, uh, something to that effect, you know, running around with suits on and actually having measuring devices, riding their bicycles, and they're demonstrating the fact that these areas are contaminated, and then when people disturb them, playing ball or soccer or mowing their lawn, that in fact they are having these exposures. We have um, a study recently that was done um, by Dr. Jim Millette, who went into homes um, that had vermiculite attic insulation from Libby, and just did some normal activities up in there and just you know, put, put in an electrical box and disturbed it and showed visually, and both in terms of measurements, that the levels of, ex of asbestos that were generated and how high they were and how problematic they are. Additionally, um, you know, we have not been great in associating disease with these exposures because it happens so many years later, but there are cases coming forward about individuals who did these types of activities and are beginning to show with disease as well. But thanks for coming and thanks for making this the most successful conference thus far. Keep me